Hello, and welcome to another episode of Accounting Insiders Podcast. My name is Gary Dehart, and I am the publisher of Insightful Accountant and Tax Practice News, as well as the host of Accounting Insiders. Today, my guest is Chris Farrell, the CEO of Lysio. You might have guessed from his from his shirt if you're watching the video here. But uh, Chris, welcome. And I'm going to kick us off with a how did with the, with a pretty uh, easy question. Well, easy should be easy for you. But how did a how did a finance guy become a tech guy? Because your background is finance, and I know I've known you at two different tech companies. So, what does that journey look like? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on, Gary. It's great to be here. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, just a, loved accounting my whole life. I studied accounting in school, got my CPA license with Arthur Anderson way back when. And that was in the uh, early 90s when, when we were working with clients, we would work with them in person. Everything was in person back then. And so the world started to change, right? And instead of being parked out at clients' offices and that kind of thing for weeks, as I was doing as an auditor, um, we really saw the accounting motions move digitally. And I was based in San Francisco, um, lived in the Bay Area my whole life and looked at it and said, well, what if accountants were able to take advantage of technology in the same way that the best companies are taking advantage of it, the best tech companies are taking advantage of it, what if we could bring that to accounting? And so that was always this really interesting intersection that I thought needed to be explored and I've had the luck and the privilege to work with a lot of great people who can build great tech and said, Let's, we had the accounting you know, mentality with the tech lean. I think we could do some really, really fun things for the profession. So that's how I got here. And it's been, um, it's been quite a journey. And, and the first company was more on expense management, right? Time tracking, expense management, that kind of thing. Yeah. So this idea, hey, look, we're doing a lot of, you know, um, a lot of manual work that needs to be automated. And that one was really interesting because it was really this first intersection between what accountants needed, which were, we need to get time cards, we can do payroll, we need to get expense reports, we get the expenses, right, and P&L, all that kind of thing. It was the intersection between what the accounting need, the firm needed, or the accountant needed, and what the client was willing to do, right? Yeah. Clients, you know, don't always, or end users don't always want to do things quickly. Um, so I really got a, a really interesting exposure there to how really it's, it's, it's hand in glove between an accountant and the client and getting all the people at the client site to give the information they need so we can close the books on time and accurately. And that was, um, that was a great first experience. And so then you took that information, kind of that knowledge, that experience, and then moved over into and, and started Lysio. When was that? A couple of years ago, probably four and a half years ago, five years ago now. Wow, has it been that long? goes quickly. There's a lot to learn here too. And I think, you know, I knew a lot, I thought coming in, I said, okay, we have a pretty good understanding of how accountants work and how clients work. Um, but the problem we're trying to solve is much bigger, which is how do we make sure that every interaction between an accountant and a client is a really good one, right? And there's so many different ways that that's happening today that it's been this really interesting problem to work on where, you know, in our view at some point soon, Clients are going to be able to interact with their accountant very, very quickly, very, very easily through a single interface. And um, it's a big kind of hairy problem, but one that's um, you know, very rewarding to work on. Yeah, and which is a great segue into, so uh, this week on, and it's the week of, it's March 3rd today. So this week we, uh, we posted a, a feature on Insightful Accountant. It was actually the results of a study that was commissioned by Caseware. I don't know, if, they don't tell you how many respondents they had, so I don't know all the details, but let me throw some of these at you and just see, kind of get your, I'm going to list them all out, and then we'll go back and just kind of talk about some of the different ones, because I think a lot of what they share in the survey fits right into what you guys do, and so it's interesting that we had this call scheduled right after this was published. I'll be really interested to hear your, your comments. So again, there was this case where a study published this week, I think, I mean, at least that's when we got the, um, the results of it. And so, sorry, I'm trying to read my cheat sheet here. So well, you know, man, one, this would be a rapid fire hot take, I think we're looking yeah. at here. So let's go. Yeah, all right. So we got cloud adoption is rising, yes or no? I certainly hope so. Yes. Okay. You passed that one. So um, challenges that they found, and again, this was, uh, 
they surveyed their accounting firm customer base. Uh, communicating with clients, which that's something you guys are working on. Using technology, something you're working on. And then uh, kind of rising cybersecurity and fraud threats. And I think that too kind of falls under the umbrella of, of some of the things that you guys are covering. Tech investment is 30%, 36% going into accounting, 28% to analytics, 20% to collaboration, which is what you guys are doing, 11% in security, you're partly in that world, and 7% in practice management. That actually surprised me because I thought that number would be higher um, only based on kind of where we see business coming in from in the space. We see a lot of, of, of business in that practice management section. A couple other things. Currently, 41% are desktop based, 50% are blended, 9% in the cloud. 74% planning to adopt cloud over the next two years. So I've just thrown a ton of things at you. Now we're gonna kind of go back and touch on some of those higher level things. So um, challenges communicating with clients. I know as a client, um, historically, there's been a lot of email that comes back and forth, right? And, and we all know email is um, a tool. It is certainly not the most secure tool. So, um, so I, I see how that is a huge challenge in communicating with clients effectively and efficiently. Um, so what, what do you see and what is Lysio doing in that world? I mean, how are you trying to tame that client communication and make it easier for both, both sides? And, no, and it, it can even be other things you've seen outside of Lysio, but. I think, yeah, I think this, is, this is a much bigger problem than this really Lysio. I think when we look at this, Gary, when we dissect the problem, we, we say, hey, look, people are still using a lot of, a lot of um, desktop software apparently, right? Makes sense, not everything moves that quickly. We also know we've got a communication issue with clients, we have a security issue, and all these are really quite related. If you go back to where we were not so long ago and where a lot of clients still are today, they still wanna come in the office, exchange paper, right? Here's my stuff, I'll come back in a week, I'll get some stuff from you, I'll write you a check and you'll be on your way. That was the, the modus operandi for how long? For decades. And a lot of clients and firms are likely still in that. We, we, don't, we know this. They are still in that pattern. But as clients have moved, you know, I got a great client. They moved out of town or across town. Driving to the office might be a bit of a hassle. I can work with them over email. Email has been around for decades now. And so people started using that more and more, obviously. But when we started to look at the limitations of email, can't send large files. Well, I got to go get a sheriff on it. Can't sign documents. I got to go to DocuSign now. Can't get paid easily. Okay, now you get making some payment software. You start to put all these things as you have a problem. You start to patch all these things. As you start mm -hmm. patching, then you realize you have a communication problem. Right? <laughs> Clients are like, well, I can't find my documents or this is too complicated. Can I just text you? Yeah. And then firms start giving out their personal phone numbers, right? Now you're texting and and now if you're in a firm, you don't want to be texting because you want to have a good weekend or be able to take a vacation, right? And so as we started moving electronically, it started creating this brand new set of problems, which now some people are saying, hey, look, we have a communication problem. We didn't have a communication problem. We're using the phone and people are coming to the office. But we certainly have one as we start to move across all these digital tools. And as we moved across all these digital tools, clients got confused and things became less secure. So one of the big you know, litmus tests we can ask ourselves is how much really sensitive information do we have in our email accounts? Like if you're an accountant, how many social security numbers or employer identification numbers do you have in your email account right now? The answer is probably too many for just about every single firm out there. Mm -hmm. If the answer is too many, the IRS, the NIST, the government, everybody's come out and said, look, we simply can't put this kind of PII over email but we have a communication problem because we need ease of use and we need security and we have to accomplish a bunch of different things, right? From signatures, large files, all those things we mentioned, we have to handle them quickly and easily in a manner that the client can actually use. So you think about like email encryption, nobody really used it because if you send something encrypted to the client, they can't open it, they got a call. If they do open it, what do they do? They look at it, they'll sign it and send it back to you unencrypted. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of like this one-way security. This kind of stuff doesn't work. So when we start to think about these, these problems that firms are looking to triage now, 
you know, security, client communications, you know, organization, moving to cloud, they're actually one common problem. And I think what's really helpful is if, if we as an accounting profession start to look at it through the client size, what do the clients want? They want something that's dead simple. And there's so many great examples of dead simple in the world now, like probably the best one in my mind is online banking. Yeah. Banks looked at it the right way and said, look, we have to entirely change the way we do business because digital transformation is here, right? If we are, have a great experience, we will fundamentally improve banking for everybody. Like both hands, both sides improve. So if we make digital banking so easy for the client, mobile phone, online, however they want to interact, tablet, we make it so easy for them that they can deposit checks, check their statements, get their tax forms, check their balances, all that kind of thing. If they can do that all in one place, single habit, what happens? Great security, on demand 24 hours, they don't call us, right? And we become suddenly a much quieter, much more productive bank. Bank of America, Chase, all these companies did that. If we look at that same experience saying, if we as the accounting profession look at how clients would see us having seven facing systems, right? Looking at them, they're gonna say, this is a mess. And so what yeah. do they do? You know, they have choices, right? I think the firms that are gonna figure this out and say, look, we're gonna become very client centric. We're gonna operate like the best companies such as banks do give them one place to go that's hyper secure and has all the tools they need. The clients will feel more successful and they're, they're, gonna, have, they're gonna run a more joyful practice. Because you know what happens, Gary, if somebody can't find a document because it could be in seven different pockets, what do they do? They call the firm. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you resend me my financials from you know two years ago? I can't find them in my email. And I'm not sure if they're in my email. It might be in some other portal you have, right? So anyway, so I think that's what, you know, as we, as we start to consider these survey questions and look at the source problem, you know, whether it's security or communication, et cetera, it's always tied back to the same thing, which is, can the client succeed in it? If the client can succeed in it, such as a banking app, then you're going to have great cloud adoption, great security, great client communication, and you're going to get great reviews, right? So it's all kind of tied together. Yeah. And they're going to be super sticky. Super sticky. I would imagine that 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 right. I mean, because if it's easy, I am willing to overlook a lot of things as long as it's easy. In fact, I was on my bank's app and I have two different banks and one of them, uh, I was trying to find just a routing number because I needed it for something. And I went on their app and this is a smaller bank. They kind of regional. I don't even know if you can call it regional, but it's a smaller bank. It's like three branches. And in their app, which was actually developed by one of the big, you know, backend providers in that world, uh, there was no way to find the routing number. And like, I'm like, that should be super easy. I shouldn't have to go find a check, to find the routing number for this bank account. And it wasn't easy. And I, this does tie into what you were just saying, because I, right when I was done with that, I'm like, okay, time to change banks, because that's ridiculous. This is the thing. I think you know we always. So I think we all, you and I, and, uh, and all the less as listeners, we all got into client service business at, early, right? And we knew client service is something we should effort for, right? Now, I think what's changed is if you look at how people are interacting today, regional banks used to have a major leg up on the big banks because they could personalize the service. They'd call us, they'd know us, they'd, they'd, they'd give us, they just they invested so much in service. Whereas the big banks simply couldn't. You got call mm -hmm. signs, right? And so for decades, regional banks outperformed big banks in terms of client satisfaction. But about 10 years ago, that flipped. Big banks started outperforming regional banks who continue to invest in people and client service. They started outperforming because people didn't want to have to call the bank anymore. They just wanted to have it available at their fingertips. Right. There's no looking back on that. Can't put the genie back in the bottle, right? And I think particularly for a lot of firms out there that are smaller, we pour our hearts and souls into our clients, right? To give them the service that they want at great expense to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're, we're literally looking at as a profession now is we might not have to put as much attention on 
having to jump up when our client says jump to get send them, resend them documents, to follow up with them, to do all these things, because the machines will actually handle a lot of that for us. We're going to create an entirely new amount of space for us to be better, you know, for ourselves, for our families, and for our clients. Exactly what Bank of America and Chase and those kinds of companies have done. Right. Yeah. Their yeah. services are more on value added things rather than just block, hey, resend statements, right? You don't have to do that anymore. Right. And so on, on one of the other bullet points was using new tech as a challenge. Um, and it's interesting because in kind of in our world and the world where we where we cross paths, that QuickBooks Pro Advisor space that that you know that we see a lot of technology, obviously. I mean, the technology is impacting the profession in a major way. And uh, most of the people that we deal with are, I would say, tech forward, yet it's still a huge challenge, right, in, in using or bringing on new technology. Um, any thoughts on that as to why that might be? I'm retired. I mean, you know, I, I look at our, I look at my, uh, my credit card bill every month for the company, and there's a lot of tech on it, right? There's so much tech. There's a lot to learn. Like, if I want to go run reports on something, I go into a system, I've got 15 different systems. Like, can I remember how to run a report? A lot of digital fatigue, even for you know, people who are in, do tech for a living. And I think the accounting profession is kind of the same way. If we look at this Cambrian explosion, if you will, of apps, all of a sudden we went from having very, very few apps, maybe just tax or accounting software, to having an awful lot. And just on the client frontier, you've got, you know, where we live, you've got how many different file storage systems, how many different communication systems, et cetera. There's an awful lot to manage there. So I think we're probably past maximum diversity of applications and we're probably mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in an era where we're starting to see things really consolidate. So like Bank of America brought all the client interactions into one interface, right? When you work at Bank of America, you don't get 10, you get one on your phone, really important. I think as we start to see that throughout the profession, we're going to see the jobs improve in accounting. People will say, you know, I'm tired. There's too much work. There's too much confusion. It's because we're trying to organize stuff. How much admin is there in accounting today? Tons. Yeah. I, I don't really hear anybody in accounting say, you know what? I don't like the satisfaction or it's no longer satisfying to me to nail it when I deliver for a client. Right, we deliver financials, we deliver tax returns, et cetera. When you nail it, and you have to sit down to your job, you have everything you need, and you do a good job. Everybody feels like this is a great, rewarding job. I think it's all the administrative stuff that's all the administrative noise that's going on that really makes it mm -hmm. hard to tease out the signal, you know, or the fact you have to chase clients all the time, that kind of thing. That's the part that I think people get a little bit disappointed in, you know. So as we address this tech fatigue, and as, as the technology, frankly, gets better for everybody, I think we're going to see. Um, a really big rebound in the profession. Yeah, and we, we're actually in the process of doing like a reasonable comp survey. And, and when you really sit down and you stop and you look at, because that's part of that survey is you have to decide how much of my time do I spend doing clerical work? How much of my time? And you're an entrepreneur, so you know, I mean, you, <laughs> it's mostly clerical work, it seems on days, right? And, you know, so how much of my time am I doing that versus this, what you and I are doing right now versus business development versus taking out the trash cans, right? I mean, and when you really start looking at, looking at that and breaking your day down, it's what you alluded to a second ago. You're like, I'm worn out because I'm doing all these tasks. And how much of that can I pass over so I can do things that are rewarding, things that are revenue producing, or things that I actually enjoy doing versus, you know, the clerical task? I, I'm, I, I love the fact you brought that up because I think there's this you know, if we were to get the smoothest, most perfect motion for an accountant, I think the answer is actually pretty obvious, right? We know, and I'd love to know the survey results when they come out, so please share them with me, but we know that the admin percentage is way too big. It's probably for most firms, more than a quarter, closer to half mm -hmm. admin work, just organizing, chasing, following up, all that kind of thing. That's a ton. If that went away, if we got admin work, imagine if you had a third of your time back every week, Job satisfaction would skyrocket. That's one. Two, I think if we're able to, to unload the admin work and we build a company that addresses what we really want, which is we really want to make our clients insanely happy, right? If we have, if our clients are so happy, what happens? 
Well, most accounts will say to get most of their business from referrals. Referrals. Yeah. Everybody wants that. You look at the best brands, like, you know, for years, there was never uh, any Uber ads, right? Uber just spread like wildfire. Facebook spread like wildfire. There were Facebook ads. People just said, this is, this is working great. You know, same thing for, you know, pick other brands, Tesla, et cetera, right? No advertising budget. That's what accounts, I, I think most accountants would say they don't enjoy self-promotion and sales. Right. Most, well, I think most would say that. If you don't enjoy that, then guess what? Your best sales team is who? Your clients. Yep. So when we start to really rationalize this whole problem set of, look, as we get really great at client service and as tech takes away a lot of the stuff we don't want to do, which is hounding clients, right? Like, you know, you and I go get a dinner reservation to get us to show up. We used to, somebody used to call us, the maitre d or whatever, the receptionist would call us saying, hey, you have a reservation, Gary, tonight at eight, right? Remember? Please show up. Now we just get a push notification to our phones. Yeah. And I think you and I would probably say we prefer the mobile notification to the phone call. Well, tech is going to absorb a lot of this, this chasing and that kind of thing. As it does that, clients are going to be happier. Clients will be happier with the experience. We're going to get more referrals, more positive online reviews, and better retention. As we get those things, guess what happens? We get our choice of client. We don't have to sell. People will come to us saying, can you do my books or help me? And we're going to say, you know, I get a chance to interview them, get a chance to find the best clients because we have the best clients, then what? Our lives are really good. Yeah. So less admin work, less sales and marketing, right? Better clients. And guess what? When this starts to happen, job satisfaction through the roof. So that's why... When we look at the problem, we always look at through, through the client size. I think, you know, we're at the cusp in the accounting profession of really this complete and total turnaround in terms of like more people being dissatisfied with their jobs than are satisfied. I think we're actually going to see that flip around and say accountants are now doing almost exclusively accounting work, which is exactly what we signed up for. And everybody's going to give the profession two thumbs up. Yeah. And then which leads to advisory, which is a whole other conversation and opportunities that are there for a what I would call a somewhat reluctant market of, of people, because there's you know so many people in the accounting profession have the skills, have the tools, have the knowledge, have the understanding, but don't take that step right to get into advisory because, wow, I just don't know exactly how to do it. Well, you do. Might be, maybe it's take a course, but um, it's, it's the best what we small business people need. It's the best part of the job, right? We come into accounting. We don't know a whole lot. We just studied a few things. Coming into the profession, nobody told us how much admin work we're going to be doing. We realized, yeah. holy smokes, there's a lot. But we do it, right? We get, give our clients great service. But along the way, we get a gift, which is we get to work with so many great clients. So we learn so much about people's different businesses and what they're going through. Yeah. Advisory, in my mind, is after you've been doing accounting for a couple of years, you, have, you get this really great broad business understanding because you get to see and talk to more businesses than just about anybody. Who talks as many businesses as we do, right? Right. And to be able to take that and, and turn that into advisory capacity just makes so much sense, right? Yeah. Uh, super fun. So I, I love that direction. So, so you had mentioned um, about there were you know very few apps. Then we've got this explosion of apps, and now it's starting to kind of kind of narrow itself back down. I guess probably like self selection, right? Um, do you think, do the big GLs and then this, this, you know, by that I'm talking about primarily in our world, it's, you know, it's into it, it's zero, maybe sage some a little bit in there. Um, do you think they are part of the equation of who wins and who loses in the app world as far as, okay, there's 10 apps that do X. Do those general ledgers put their fingers on the scale one way or the other? Well, they're definitely, they're definitely going to try, right? I think if you look at like a lot of the marketplaces, the app marketplaces, what they do is they'll see the downloads, they'll see the reviews, they'll see the activity. They're getting great feedback in terms of what the market is demanding at any given mm -hmm. time. So they're going to be able to, to acquire their way into a lot of those. And I think they, they've made some moves along the way. I think there's so much fragmentation at the same time that you know, a lot of firms are no longer looking at the world in a one size fits all kind of motion, right? So you could, you know, pick the big, big GLs. Do you want to be simply locked into one forever? Or do you want to have options, right? I think the big ones are going to define a lot of and shape a lot of the market. But I think ultimately the accountant's going to want to have a lot of choice. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a push pull 
on that. And we're seeing, I think, more push-pull in that regard in the last year or two than we've seen maybe in a lot of years. Um, but they're going to have their hand in it. I think innovation will continue to happen outside of the big guys, obviously. How much innovation has there been in you know, the payment space, the expense reporting space, et cetera, outside of the big GLs? Most, right? Yeah. Most innovation continues to be out there. And people are building really great companies that are delighting um, customers in a huge way. And they're staying you know, in control of their own destiny. Bill.com went public, Expensify went public. There's a lot of great, you know, great companies that have been built that have really moved the market positively. So I think it's going to see this great race to bring, to continue to bring great ideas and great productivity to the market. And mm -hmm. these success stories are accelerating that. And we're seeing companies yeah. Bill.com buy Divi and that kind of thing too. So right. see, again, more consolidation um, behind bigger names. Um, that, I think that's a, probably a good thing for the market overall. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you go into a trade show, right. And there's like, Oh, I got 10 different, you know, expense apps to look at. Well, I can't look at 10 apps and actually learn something while I'm here and actually look at the other, you know, seven things I need to look at while I'm there. It's just not enough hours in the day. So is there, um, so let's talk about security and, and fraud and, and that threat from a, not necessarily from, Oh, I mean, I think we all know that that's a problem, right? But how can the accounting professional better train their clients about this, not just in the communications they have with them, but really raise the awareness because we're aware of it. Well, you, because you're in technology, me, because we write about it, but also we see it written about. Um, and we deal with a lot of different companies that are, that are technology based. But how can an, an accounting firm or an accounting professional help their clients understand how important security and data security is to their business. You know, if I'm a restaurant guy. I'm just trying to run a restaurant here. I don't want to have to worry about security, but it's a big deal. It's a big problem that can completely crush a business. How, how does an accounting professional help their client understand what that real threat is? I think there's two pieces. I think there's two pieces. Okay. I think, frankly, you have this, I understand, but I still want things to be easier. Right. I think that yeah. might be you know, a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the issue is that convenience trumps the smart thing sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we kind of have to have seatbelt laws for a reason. Right. Right. So, um, seems like an easy call. Uh, so when you think about it and through that lens, I think there's this idea that we have to make security an end. Security has to be part of an offering that we have, which is security and convenience. Security and isolation and trying to convince somebody of it. Like we'd say, hey, look, eat healthfully, don't drink soda, all this kind of stuff. We say that sort of blue in the face, but it's not going to it's not going to really move the needle. So I think the way we you know we think about it is this idea that if you can make security and convenience go hand in hand, such as the Bank of America app, right? Check deposits are insanely secure now, right? Because I'm using my mobile phone, log in biometrically, super easy to log in. I get mm -hmm. a scanner there, and I don't have to go to the ATM. Or I don't have to go to the branch, right? And I don't have to. It's just so much simpler. So I think what they've done is they've they've really looked at it through the client lens, which is the clients are segmented. Some people are going to say, "Hey, look, I'm a security wonk. I really want this the latest and greatest security." That's a very very small percentage of the market. I think on the other end of the spectrum, I I'm, I want to work with an accounting firm who understands that I don't like to do my own accounting. I just want to get through this as fast as possible. Make it easy for me. I think that's the super majority of the market. And so when we look at this idea of like, just make it easy for me, it includes security, includes communications, includes file transfer, includes signatures, includes all those things. Security is just part of that make it easy package. And so I think that's when you look at like what these big banks have done and why they're beating regional banks, that's the key, right? We have to be thinking for our clients in a way that is just security is, is baked in. It, is that going as far as saying, hey, you know, when we have our annual quarterly, whatever our, our, our meeting cycle is, is that going as far as saying, hey, we need to do a tech audit. We need to bring in this company. You need to budget X number of dollars for this. Here I am being an advisor, but this has got to be done. If you want to be in business next year, if you don't want to turn everything you own over to some, you know, some Crown Prince in Nairobi, you know, you need to 
you need to do this and you need to spend the thousand to whatever the number is. I don't even know what it costs, but is that, is that you think part of, should be part of their conversations? I think that's what clients want. I mean, not, I, I can't speak for all clients, obviously, but yeah. you think about a business owner who is taking on particularly small businesses, right? If you got a 10 person business, 20 person business, even smaller, how many professional seats do you have around you? Probably not enough, right? You've got HR problems, you have IT issues, you've got all this insurance stuff. I mean, how many different things are coming at you? Just tons. And so if you're really beleaguered, you know, in that regard, if you have an accountant just coming saying, hey, look, you know, I want to make sure you're covering on all these things. I can help you with these things. You know, what do you say? I don't see why that isn't a great thing, because if there's one person in your network whom you trust implicitly, it's your accountant. Right. And your accountant is seeing this over and over. The patterns repeat themselves over and over and over. So I think what you're onto, Gary, there is such a great, great idea. Like we can put the security seat right next to you and make it easy. And absolutely. So let's talk about probably get five more minutes here um, again, because I want to be respectful of your time. So in the survey, it talked about tech investment, 30, 36% in accounting software. And again, I don't know exactly what the question was. That number, I don't know, it seems kind of high to me, but um, let's look at the ones that, that impact your world. So 20% on collaboration, 11% in security. And 7%, so that's 27, that's 38% kind of in your world, right? Again, that's collaboration, practice management, and security. Um, is that a number that lines up with kind of where you, um, would you agree with that, those percentages? I think we're seeing it now. I think the yeah. collaboration part, if you look at collaboration even two years ago, I would guess that that number would have been really, really small. Right. I think what's now is taking hold is this idea that people are tired of the admin. If there's one thing that happened over the, the whole pandemic mess was people had to do everything digitally. And now the light bulb moment, because all of a sudden we started working not next to each other and all of these silos we created became really that much more painful for us to deal with. Yeah. So I think people are now wrestling with this. I think before, you know, 2019 and prior collaboration was probably a zero percent wasn't wouldn't even have registered, right? And now you're saying, look, we have a, a quarter of firms mm -hmm. saying this is a, something we have to actively tackle. And a lot of them are saying we're going to tackle it this year, which is that's an amazing change. Uh, things don't things tend to move fairly glacially in accounting. Yeah. To go from probably zero to a quarter that quickly is a big deal. Security has always been an issue, I think, unless it's unless you've gone through a lot of pain, right? We know it's just a matter of time before people get breached. It's just we've seen it everywhere in the world pretty much, right? It's still a low percentage relative to the risk, unfortunately, um, because, you know, it's kind of it's not in front of you. It's hard to pay attention to it. Right. Absolutely. So let's wrap up with just some high level, whatever you can share about Lysio, what's on the Lysio roadmap. Um, and, and maybe it's the give me the 30 second sales pitch of Lysio. If I'm a if I'm a because we use it, so I kind of know it, but I know a lot of people may not be aware of it. So. What is Lysio? Again, 30 seconds to a minute. You know, what do you tell if somebody calls and says, hey, well, I probably don't call anymore, right? They email or they tag, whatever. Anyway, somebody says, hey, what is Lysio? What is that? I see your shirt. What does that mean? Sure, sure. Well, I think Lysio is for accountants, it's the next generation client experience. It's client experience 2.0. And so we're a great fit for companies who believe that their most valuable asset in the company is their team and their clients. It's the people, right? And we believe that in order to take care of both, if you start with the client and you make the client incredibly happy, it gets a lot easier for your team. And so when we think about what we're doing, you know, what we've been doing is we've been saying, we're going to put you all into a single place where you get all of your documents, sign all your documents, find them later, communicate securely. It's that one place you can go on your mobile phone or on the web instead of, you know, being spread across a bunch of different places. So when we look forward to what we're doing um, over the next couple of months, we've got some really exciting releases. Um, the one I'm most excited about probably is SMS messaging. So two-way texting through our platform. So okay. if you want Gary to text your accountant, you can just send them a text message right through your phone. Don't have to log into the app and they can respond to you via text or put something directly on your app right there, you know, because in texting, you can't do everything, right? You can't send 
files back and forth over text. So there's, there's this really this hybrid communication that's taking advantage of everything that we like to do today, but pairing with a bunch of tools that when it gets to the firm, it doesn't blow up somebody's phone on the weekend. It'll go into their right pocket. The team will be able to see everything. The client sends you a file via text. It will convert it to a PDF, be sitting in their account inside of Lysio. So we're really kind of taking all these silos and pulling them off the table. Our email integration is doing the same thing. So you can use Outlook or Gmail. Everything goes to the right account so everybody can see it. So we're not BCCing and CCing each other anymore. It's going to take that signal um, and bring the signal way up and the noise way down. Mm. And we're even doing things like, you know, if something comes in, an email comes in from an account that you know, a contact that you know, we're going to prioritize that because we get a lot of spam in our emails. So you sit down with Lissio and look at Lissio. No. You're going to see your clients. You get spam in your email? Ah, you know, one or two a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's really just taking all these things that we're doing today, take all the patterns that people are going through today and just put them all in one place and acknowledge that we're not going to get rid of texting. We're going to acknowledge that, right? And we're, but we are going to say, if you're going to text the client, the client's going to send you a text back and it's not going to go to your personal phone. That means people can take vacations, mm -hmm. right? If you're working as a team of four and you're on vacation, you can be there. The client can still text you, quote unquote you, but the text is going to be routed to your teammate who's covering. Imagine that. You know, and imagine how many accountants haven't been able to take a vacation because if you don't check the email every couple of hours, you might miss something from the client and then what? Then you can't delegate it or you got a client issue. We, we as accountants, we as a profession have to be able to take vacation. We have to let our team members take vacation. We have to be able to cover, not miss a step with our clients. I'm really, really excited about all that kind of thing. So that's yeah. what I'm Great. And then what, um, have, you, have you started laying out your trade show calendar for the year? A little bit. A little bit. We'll see about it scaling, I'm sure, um, yeah. later, and um, we'll have to, we'll to cross-reference calendars a little bit. And and are you, um, your platform, Magnot, I mean, you don't care what accounting software, I mean, you're not really related to accounting software at all, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's our thing. I mean, I, I think one of the big things that we acknowledge as a company from day one was we don't want to at all interfere with what's working well in firms today. Mm -hmm. So you can use any practice management system you want, et cetera, like our Zapier integration, you can plug into just about anything. We're building direct integrations, a number of software packages such as QuickBooks and Xero and so forth. We want you to have total control of your, of your back office. People like to be able to change their back office stuff too, right? What start, you started with this year, as you grow in the next three years, you might want something entirely different. The point here is you should be able to use whatever systems you care to, but your client experience stays static. If you choose to move to X, Y, and Z system, you don't want to have to move all your clients too. Right. So that's one of the big things is like, let's give everybody, like at Bank of America, you would never want to see the 12 or 15 different systems they have behind this, the curtain. You always stick with the app that you see. And that's mm -hmm. been a really, really strategic point for us, which is you're not locked in. You have freedom of choice. Yeah. And it's funny as a user, we don't even want it, that interface to change. Right. I mean, <laughs> we just no, I'm, I'm happy seeing the same picture I've seen for the past 15 years. That's fine. Because I know I'm in the right place. That's right. right. Let me let me biometrically log in and, and yep. follow my routine and don't disturb me. Yep. yep. You know, you don't have to make it pretty for me. That's right. That's All right. right. And then I'm gonna throw one more thing here and see if this is a may be fair, may not be fair. Um if you had a top three steps, maybe five, maybe it's four, to efficiency for a firm, is there is there something that you put, hey, is this, or maybe, yeah, let's stick with efficiency. What's the first thing a firm needs to do? And then what's the second and the third? Oh, I think number one, two, and three for me, that's, I'm kind of cheating here, but um, it really is, you have to understand, we need, to, we need to really understand that the issue typically isn't us as accountants. It's typically if a client doesn't play ball, that creates the problem for us, right? And so we can work on all these back office efficiency things, but if the client doesn't play ball, which happens just about everybody, if the client gets everything late and there's a deadline, what do we do? We do a diving catch to help the client meet the deadline. Right. It happens over and over and over. We're in the client service business, we have to jump. And but, train them in really bad habits, right? That's right. And, and so, but if we change the game, which is the second a client gets something, instead of putting a shoe box or putting it in a pile and forgetting about it, if we put them in, if we change their habits where the second they get it, they just take their phone out, they take a picture of it, and they send it to us, we get what we need on time, 
Yeah. Or we can automatically gather things. So we've seen a great amount of efficiency about it. It's automatically pulling bank statements, for example. Right. The more stuff we can get early in cycle, the easier our jobs gets. So this always goes back to the client. If we have great clients who are on time and who care and appreciate what we do, we have businesses that feel great. If we have clients that can't get us stuff either by because there's too many hurdles that we put in their way or they're just simply not interested, right? We can fix one of those, give our clients every tool they need to be successful, right? If we fail in that, then we have choices to make. And I think how many times have you heard people talking about, I need better clients, right? right? It's okay to fire a client who's not paying attention to me. But I think the first thing that's incumbent upon us to do is to make it, to put our client in a position where they can succeed. Bank of America and Chase did that with check deposit. You can fully succeed depositing a check. You can fully succeed finding a tax form from this year or prior year on your own. You can fully sell service. That's really important. So I think to run a great efficient accounting firm, number one is you got to have, put yourself in a position to have your client succeed. Number okay. two, if you can do that, then you have an ability to attract better clients, right? By referrals and so forth, which means you have the ability to choose the clients you want to fit your business. You know, we're, we're having a conversation internally today about sports agents, right? You can be a sports agent and you could have LeBron James and Steph Curry as a client, or you could have a bunch of journeymen. Which would you rather have? Mm -hmm. Steph and LeBron are going to get you paid a lot more for the same amount or less work. Get right. Them, right. So make it easy for your clients, get the clients you want. When you do that, make more money, you know, feel far more successful and probably be rewarded better. And I think accounting, unfortunately, is, is a bit of a distributive game. Some firms are going to get a lot better clients than others, but it's how you position yourself. The firms that get the best clients are going to be far more efficient. The second those clients are far more efficient, then you're really working on the fun stuff, which is gee whiz. How, how great of a team can we build internally? Because I'm going to have staff that are thrilled to be here. Right. right? I think it's this really virtuous thing. So when I think about it, I always go back and start with the client because that's, you know, just like agencies, right? If you have the best clients, you're winning the game. Right. Yeah. And then gets you in that point where you can go, I don't want to deal with you. I'm not going to deal with you. And I think that's a really hard thing for client, for companies to do, accounting firms to do, especially in the early stages. You know, they you end up taking all this business, but then you end up with all this business that you don't really want, or you're all this business that is busy business, right? Versus, like you said, taking care of some really key select clients that allow you to do, to allow you to grow and and to grow with them. So it's a partnership, right? You know, I view accounting, a client accounting relationship is a partnership. And if you do everything in your might as accountants, and I think we do this over and over and over, we give of ourselves nonstop. But if we have a partner on the other side who doesn't value our work or doesn't respect these timelines we agreed to, it makes things really, really hard for us. I'm not saying we just, hey, look, you know, it's not about just fees and everything. We have great clients who, you know, don't they don't can't afford to pay us as much that's fine but as long as they understand like hey for me to service your account well i need to have your stuff in by the 15th of the month if i don't have by the 15th of the month i've got scheduling issues i have other clients too so yeah. if, you, if you meet if you can please meet the deadlines we put out there they're reasonable and agreed to we're gonna have a great working relationship fees aren't as important but if they're willing if they're not willing to do that and they give us everything on the last day of the month and expect to have a turnaround in two days that puts a lot of pressure on us and our teams I think that's what we're really talking about, right? Absolutely. And, and I think that's that goes back to this whole idea, like if we put the right tools and the right st structure in the hands of our clients, we're going to be a lot happier. You know, and if they don't do it, that's one thing. Okay, it's not a great fit. We move on. Right. And those who are willing to partner with us in that way, accounting is a great, great profession. Perfect. And we will leave it at that. Chris, thank awesome, you so much. Chris. Thanks for uh, carving some time on a Friday afternoon. Um, it's the weekend for me. Well, it's three fifty, so it's not quite uh, it's not quite the weekend yet, but uh, a little bit closer for me than it is for you. Um, well, it's been an absolute pleasure here. So have a great weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you and the whole team, everything you guys do. And uh, good. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.